Go in peace and sanctify the Lord by your life. These are the words that the priest would greet God's people at the end of every celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And it's also the same invitation today that St. Peter is inviting us in his letter as he encouraging us to do this very fact, that is to sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Again, good morning. Welcome all of you to our celebration of this Holy Eucharist on the sixth Sunday of Easter. How important for us to continue reflect upon in John chapter 14. As Jesus about to depart from this world and ascended into heaven, returning to his God the Father. We hear in John chapter 14 from last week how, Pe how Philip come to Jesus and said, Show us the Father and that is enough for us. And today we continue to hear and can that answer from Jesus Christ as he projected and preparing Philip as well the other 11 disciples or 10 disciples that Jesus is going to return to the Father. And these are the words that he promised to them here in John chapter 14. He said here, But you know him because he remains with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer seize me, but you seize me, because I live and you will live. I live and you will live. But as part of this passage then, also help us to recognize who are we in the eyes of God? Who are we in our relationship with Jesus Christ? Pope Francis this morning, in his own reflections, he said that we are God's children. We are not orphans. We are God's children and we are not orphans. He explored deeper in this whole area as what does it mean that we are God's children, that we are not orphans. That in the world today, many people are absent or longing for that father figures or longing for that mother figures in their life. And this absence of the father figure creates so much doubt, so much anxiety, so much depression in their life. And that in this time of the pandemic, more than ever, we are in need of God's presence. And to remind ourselves that we are God's children and God become that great creator, that great father figure for all of us. But also we have to affirm ourselves, we are not orphans. That as Jesus returned to God the Father, He and God does, do not abandon us, but they gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit then another way of revealing God to all of us, another way of, of reminding us that Jesus is the way to the Father, the truth and the life. So remind yourself that very fact. Even if you may be living in your life, losing and wanting and desiring for that father figures or that mother figures in your life, God is with you and that you and I are not orphans. So as we live through and survive through this whole pandemic of COVID-19, many people are going through a different realities, many going through and how to cope with it in many different ways. And according here to Bo Walker in her blog, she identify as we survive, living in the survival mode, or certain realities of our life that can cause, trigger three emotions that's in us. The first emotion is stigma. Second, status. Third is shame. Maybe when we're going through that loss of a father figures or a mother figures in our life, we could feel that too. Stigma, status, and shame. But she identifies certain reality that may cause as we go through this whole pandemic, the stay-at-home order and the social distancing. That could also trigger too as we go through the survival mode. And so she said here, maybe a chronic pain, a serious illness, maybe certain disability, like my mom who's blind now, can encounter that. Certain hearing loss, certain immobility in our life. 
maybe being a primary caregiver. Now, we have struggled with not having a job or being furloughed. That can also trigger the sense of stigma, the sense of lowering your status, or the sense of shame. And finally, maybe those who are going through a divorce, a breakup, or some form of addictions. So, Val then help us to see what does that stigma look, look like? Because it can cause us into this whole isolation of our life. She said, sometimes we feel like we not, it's not okay to talk about issues because, because of this whole reality, we want to be secret, we want to be hidden of what's going on in our life. And the same could also be true because of this survival mode. We also look at, I, I'm isolating in my own status because of the fact that I'm different than others. I'm being broke, I'm being unemployed. Or the shame they can go through is that something wrong with me. That I'm not, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not good enough. So that whole areas of inferior status can also trigger when we go through this whole survival mode during this pandemic. And so that could, be, that could happen to the disciples too in today's readings. As Jesus is about to return to the Father. They no longer have a mentor. They no longer have a teacher to accompany them, to help them to overcome their own doubts, their own fears, even their own ability to heal others. And so that sense of emptiness, of, of, of being absent, can also create that sense of void in all of us, that sense of vulnerabilities in all of us. So then St. Peter then turned to his community and be reaffirm them of these five different steps in those in that second reading that allow us to see. And he said here, these five steps: sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. And that journey of sanctification, that journey of holiness, by allowing Christ to enter deep into our hearts is an important part. And the second step: be ready to give an explanation. When people ask you, why do you have that great hope? Why do you have that great faith in Jesus Christ? Or maybe when they go through that whole journey, what they encounter, their own stigma, their own shame, and their own status of, of loss of that status. But what he's asking us to have patience when we answer those questions. He said, hey, be gentle and be reverence. Don't be quick to judge, don't be quick to temper but show that great gentleness and reverence. And fourth, he said, keep your conscience clear. And that's one of the ways that we can sanctify our life with God, our life with Jesus Christ. How clear is your conscience? And then fifth, put to death in the flesh, for Jesus was brought to life in the spirit. Put to death in the flesh, for Jesus was brought to life in the spirit. In these five steps, maybe, St. Peter kind of help us to remind ourselves that we are God's children, that we are not orphans. These are the steps that can fulfill some of that void that we may go through. Some of the stigma that you and I may label ourselves, and sometimes it can be really necessary or unnecessary. Whatever that helped us to journey through this pandemic is such an important part of our journey. As Jesus prepared Philip and the disciples, and we see that it is possible if we can place greater trust in what Jesus is saying, the commandment to love and the commandment to, and, and the invitation to follow and keep God's commandment. You know, that whole duality plays in, a, in, in John chapter 14. When I love God, when I love Jesus, then I should keep God's commandment and obeying God's commandment. Or the other way could also be true at the end of that gospel. Keep God's commandment, reverence for God's commandment, and God's love will always be with all of us. And so Philip again portrayed that in that gospel, and then in the first reading, he came out and proclaimed the word of God, and allowed people to give reverence to who God is in Jesus Christ. But as we go through this whole journey of looking for that father figure, Maybe some suggestions for you to look at. 
Can you be kind with yourself? Kindness to yourself is such an important part of our life. To realize that I am God's children. How do I be kind to myself? And sanctify the Lord in my heart. Here, Dr. Martha Levine, she gave us ways how to do that. And her creative ways is just by journaling. And by journaling, we can show ourselves that we can be kinder and not great, put greater expectation that may be beyond something that we can expect, that you can't hope for. So she said here, first, journal about your milestones. What are some of your milestones, your birthdays, your anniversary, your graduation? And by journaling that milestone, kind of put your life into perspective. And to remind yourself, you know, everything that I have accomplished here, because God is with me. And the Holy Spirit always accompanying me in that journey. And I'm not alone. Second, he said, journal about your past failures. What happened? How did you feel? And what did you learn from that failures? Because it is in the failure sometimes that makes us feel that I am an orphan. That no one is with me. And I'm beginning to blame. But in journaling, your past failures kind of bring back into perspective. Maybe I was never alone. But maybe it was in my own choosing, my own freedom to make those decisions. And third, she said, journal about your dreams. Where do you hope to be in a year? Where do you hope to be in five years? And see yourself, am I in that path toward those five years to the next year that is to come when this stay-at-home order is no longer, where this fear of the pandemic is no longer, when maybe when I, that emotion that I go through, this survival mode of stigma, of status, of shame is no longer be there. So what are your dreams? And remind yourself, that we are all God's children, and none of us are orphans.